Hey guys. So, I'm in need of a new compressor. Um, not that there's anything wrong with my old one. Um, I'm, I'm in actually I'm in need of a different compressor. So I figured um, this would be a good opportunity to give you a quick overview of the uh, refrigeration compressor. Um, explain what some of the tubes do, and we'll have a look at our relay under here. So, make sure you can see what's going on. It's not too bright. We'll just move that. So what we've got here is a uh, more of an industrial compressor than you probably find. Um, this was out of a, a large refrigerator in a restaurant. Um, there's no real markings on it. It gives a model number. I wasn't really able to find much information on it, but they're all basically the same. Um, I guess we'll start over here with the power. So you've got your two wires, your red and your white. Obviously one's your, uh, your live wire and the other's uh, the uh, ground. I'm going to assume that if you're if you're watching this, you know at least a little bit about electricity pressure. So what we have here is uh, a temperature sensor and our controller for the coils inside. Um, I can never remember which one's which. I think this is the um, temperature sensor, and all that's in there is little thermocouple. Um, when the it's just a little strip of metal and when it heats up it bends down and it 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 breaks contact when it cools down it'll straighten back up and it'll regain contact it's very simple um, and then this one is what controls the actual uh, starting and running coils inside the compressor um, just a little relay switch. Uh, it'll start both coils for a few seconds, and then it'll turn the the starting coil off, and it'll just keep running. Sometimes they have this system. Sometimes they have different stuff. Uh, this seems to be the older way to do things, and if you're taking a compressor out of an older fridge, that's what you're going to find. Um, if this is bad they are fairly simple to replace um, it, locally here we have a, a place called AMRE uh, and they sell all this type stuff uh, for a pretty decent price um, okay, let's keep this together so I don't lose it now I'm not going to take this apart there are a few videos online and I'm assuming if you've seen this you've seen those as well um, but basically there's like four or five different styles of actual guts. Um, there's a scroll style where it's just two, two scrolls that mesh together and, and one spins and it just creates pressure. Uh, there's the standard piston that just creates pressure. Um, there's a few others, uh, none come to mind at the moment, but there's, there's at least four or five. Um, now we get to the hoses. This compressor is a little different from what you're probably going to have. Uh, we have our service, which is just a, a port into the casing. Uh, this is where you can refill, refill the oil. Um, and that's basically all you're going to do with this, unless you're cutting the thing apart. And then you don't even need that. Uh, this one here, the smaller one, let me turn this so you can see it better. Now, there's four hoses here. You can ignore these ones for now. This smaller one is our outlet. Uh, the only real way to determine which is which, which one's the inlet and which one's the outlet, is to actually run the compressor and feel which one has air coming out of it. Um, most of the time, you're not going to find information online about which is which. Although, I did find a really good PDF, and I'll put that in the description. Uh, from Embraco, 
uh, and it, it, it answered so many of my questions when I was doing the other compressor. Um, so we have our outlet, we have our inlet. Um, these are not a standard size in any way, shape, or form. You're just going to have to measure them and uh, get the appropriate fittings, uh, either compression fittings or solder fittings. And what makes this compressor different is these two. Um, in some cases, you'll find that your compressor has a service port, inlet, outlet, and then one of these. And that is an oil cooler. This one has two. Because it's a more industrial version, um, it needs a little bit more cooling for the the capacity of the fridge. This is almost double the size of a, of a standard uh, house fridge. Um, I probably won't be using these because I won't have this thing running for prolonged periods of time. Um, now, let's look into actually running this unit. I gotta put this back together. You know, safety forced. Alright. I'm gonna turn this 90 degrees just so it's easier for me to plug everything in. Now remember, these do nothing. Actually, I'll take and put them sort of down a little bit. This is your outlet. This is your inlet. I've got to take 10 seconds here and do some wiring. Always unplug it. Alright, uh, so unfortunately the camera filled up. Um, so I went in, transferred the film, I got myself a coffee, and uh, I finished the wiring. Now, as I was saying, the thing about uh, house current is that in this case, it doesn't matter which wire goes to which side. That's that's not always the case, but in this in this situation right here, it doesn't matter. You can have the red going to to whichever side of this wire you choose. Um, you should note here, I haven't hooked up the ground. I will once I have, like, built something out of this. But for now, it's just sitting as it is. Um, plug the unit back in. I wired in this little switch temporarily so I can turn the machine on and off without having to unplug it. So... It's got a little oil still in it, or a little, I should say, coolant still in it. That was a pretty dumb idea. Um, <laughs> I, I, was, I was thinking about just as I did it, don't cover this with your finger because you're apt to cut yourself and then you're going to squirt an air bubble into your, under your skin and that's, that's a trip to the doctor and a night in the, in the hospital. So, um, I think that's about it. I'm not going to discuss what I'm turning this thing into yet. Um, that'll be a, a, a video for the near future. Uh, and I'm not going to hook these up to anything because they just sit there. Um, the best I could do is take some uh, car antifreeze and run it through there, circulate it with a maybe a small uh, uh, fish pump or something like that. Um, but that's it, I guess. If you have any questions, you want me to get in more in depth in any of the parts, um, feel free to let me know. Uh, I'll do my best to answer any questions you have. And uh, as always, you guys have yourselves a good day. Hey guys, um, 
So I was doing a little bit more playing around with this. And I figured I'd show you a pressure test. Uh, it's not a stall test. I can't actually get this compressor to stall for some reason. Um, I suspect it's got a switch inside that protects it from uh, uh, producing too much pressure. Um, but I've preset this. Let's see if I can get the light out here. I've preset this uh, out, output pressure to about 55. And um, we're going to see how much high pressure it can hold. I've already done this a few times, so I know it's perfectly safe. Uh. And you can see right there, it builds to just under 500. And then it stops. Um, I've even tried putting shop air into this side, and it'll only go up by another like 30 psi. And uh, and that's all I can get out of it. But uh, 500 should be enough, hopefully, to do what I wanted to do. Uh, with that. Have a good day.